Now the support is really important because along the way as we train up in open intelligence there can be all kinds of um, or you could say pitfalls or really common pitfalls along the way and so having the support of a global community, written trainings, training media that's free to download online and trainers who can share their experience means that these these really common pitfalls can be easily avoided. So what I've seen is that um, I had all kinds of ideas or new data if you like come up as I became familiar with open intelligence. I, I could see this contrived cultivated identity it, it was just something that I'd made up. You know, this is who I am, this is what I like to do, these, this is the clothes that I wear, and I'm going to tell you about myself just so that you know, you know what my identity is and, and try and convince myself that that's who I really am. And, um, but it never felt stable because those ideas and those, those preferences and the things I liked and my opinions were always changing. So I'd try and pin them down, but that they weren't fixed, I couldn't hold them in place. And so I'd try and tell this story about who I am and, and repeat this story and um, but now suddenly I could see, well, well hold on, all of this is, it, this is just this dynamic display. This is just a big story that I've been telling. I might have been telling it for a while so it really seems like it is something but more and more I'm, I'm seeing that I, I can't hold on to any of these descriptions. They all self-release naturally. None of them leave a trace in this, this pristine openness of intelligence like the, the flight path of a bird in the sky. They just resolve naturally. So hold on, but, but, then, but then who am I? You know, what, what, I, I, you know I, am, I can't even, you know, I, I thought I was a boy. Mm -hmm. I thought I was a man, but hold on, if I'm open intelligence mm -hmm. then, then how does that work out? And, and, and you know, this, this could have been really complicated and maybe there's nobody there. You know, when people say, what's your name? Maybe I just have to say, I have no name, or there's nobody there, or who is the one that is asking who is my name? And, you know, this sort of... Thankfully, what I've seen is that actually all data is included within open intelligence. So I don't need to take up any kind of contrived artificial way of relating. You know, being, having um, an identity is included within open intelligence in a completely relaxed way. So I see that my fundamental identity is open intelligence. That is what is always constant. All of the ideas about my identity are coming and going and I can be completely relaxed about them all. I don't need to discard them or pretend that they don't have any validity or adopt you know, strange ways of speaking. Now I can see these contrived ways of having an identity. So the speech becomes really natural. I can still refer to him and her and um, we don't have to take up any you know, extremes in, in any way. I can enjoy the, the mundanity of life as much as I can enjoy the incredible adventures of life. All of it experienced from this, this place of just complete relaxed openness. I enjoy my adventures more because I'm not trying to um, hold on to them or make something out of them. They just occur spontaneously. You know, I can enjoy going to the shop and just interacting in a really relaxed way with the, the, the shopkeeper or the people in the shop. It's all this seamless, spontaneous display of just complete benefit that, that I can really enjoy. And um, in terms of the ideas about Balanced View being a cult, that's completely normal. You know, everybody that's been involved has had that, that data come up. And, um, for myself, it was interesting to look at it in different ways. I, um, when that came up for me first, I went, I went online and I, all right, what, I better look this up. You know, I look up online and what's a cult? And you know, maybe I'm in a cult and I haven't realised. And, um, <laughs> and and there were certain things that I experienced in in, in balanced view that that didn't 
tally with these, these ideas uh, that were often pretty vague about what a cult is. Um, and, and one of the things was that um, there, there was this sense of, of welcome that I found in all of the, the meetings that I came to and whenever I was just hanging out with the community. But there was never this sense of pressure that I had to be there. There was, there was never anybody forcing me to be there. It was always my decision. And um, if, if anybody decides that they're, they're not interested, then that's completely fine. You know, if anybody wants to go off and do whatever they want to do for a year or two or ten and, and then come back, then they're completely welcome. It, it, what I see is that as I train up in open intelligence and I use the four mainstays, um, to empower that recognition, it's not a way of me cutting off from the world and from my family and from engaging in life. It's a, it gives me the capacity to engage with life and engage with people from a place of complete open-heartedness, <coughs> whoever they are, whether they're involved with Balanced View or have never heard of it or are not interested in it. It's the same capacity to respond in a completely open-hearted way. And this is why I see the the potential for this because I, I, I I've shared this before but I, I've never met anybody that were, was more opinionated, self-centered, um, selfish, well-meaning <laughs> and confused than myself. I've never met anybody in my life that was more self-centered, well-meaning, confused than, than I was. Never. Anybody. None of you. <laughs> None of you. Maybe on a, maybe on a par, <laughs> but, but not more. And I began to take advantage of what the support that was being given here. Very gently at first, with lots of suspicions and, you know, uncertainties about what is this thing and organizations or... Oh. That's a little bit dangerous, isn't it? And um, which is really normal. That had been my experience up until this point. But I was open just to test out the short moments, and I, I took some audios and, and listened to those. And, and just by listening to these audios, I began to see these incredible results. You know, like just there was this sense of openness and ease, this sense of deep insight into the nature of reality. There was um, just this capacity to to relate with more and more open-heartedness. And it was like, this is, in, this is incredible. This, I mean, for me, the bottom line is, and this was what took me by surprise, was this actually works. This actually works. And, and that was a bit scary as well. Oh my God, you know, I've been looking at so many things and reading so many books for decades. Now I find something that works. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Am I really? Oh, 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 that was a little bit scary. But the results I saw were, were so profound that I continued on regardless of the, the data that was coming up and the fears that came up. And I could ask about those fears and concerns in the, the, the context of, of the training and, and have those clarified and hear about experience of people that had just gone a little bit before me. And um, so I saw these incredibly profound results in myself. And then when I started to, well, it's actually when I went to the centre in Sweden for the first time, and I saw the way that groups of people could live and work together, and it was not like anything I'd ever seen before. And I'd been in all kinds of groups and organisations and festivals and clubs and schools and different workplaces, you know, different groups of people doing things together. And this was not like anything I'd ever seen. Nothing. There was complete openness, complete authenticity, and people just getting on with what needed to be done. And there wasn't this sort of like snidey gossiping or, or, or jealousy being played out or this, this personal politics of, you know, notice me, notice me, why, why didn't I get that? job and why have you given it to them and now I'm going to go off and sulk and not do my thing properly because I'm, you know, all of this stuff that was just so normal for me from everything else that I'd been involved in. And I began to see just how profound and important the potential of this training was. You know, I began to see if this can work for me, it can work for anybody. 
And I have absolute certainty in that. And I've seen it for myself and for thousands of people from all walks of life, from many different countries and backgrounds. If, if you show up in the Four Mainstays, open intelligence is guaranteed to become more obvious. Simple as that. It's an algorithm and it works. Um, and in terms of not wanting to shout about it, that's such a powerful data stream just to allow to be as it is. And to test in your own experience what happens when you do go around <laughs> shouting about it. <laughs> which I certainly did, particularly when I was quite new to this, and I saw this profundity of like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever come across in my life. Like, by, by far. And so I did go around shouting about it, you know, raving about it to all of my friends and family, and, and the effect of that was to really scare them away from balanced view for quite a long time. And, um, and so it's great now to just allow that urge to tell everybody to be exactly as it is. And you empower that um, data stream with real wisdom by allowing it to be as it is. And extract the power of skillful discernment of seeing what to say and when to say and how to say it in a way that people will relate to. Um, and what's been interesting now over the years that I've been involved is that the same friends and family who, you know, who is this ranting lunatic just going on about open intelligence, short moments, data, <laughs> every, everything's resolved, you, you won't be a victim anymore, You're, everything will just be easy and they're just like, whoa, you know, what's going on here? It must be a cult. <laughs> And then slowly what I've seen is over the years, by me becoming completely relaxed with this need to, to, to really tell everyone, and then really seeing the results in me, that um, first of all what I heard was about friends surreptitiously watching my videos. You know, not because I'd said anything. And now I have close friends that are beginning to participate in the training, and I have never said well, since that time of complete <laughs> over-enthusiasm, I haven't said anything to them about it, and now they're interested in the training. I have family members who tell me that they're not interested in the training, and then I hear about them telling other family members um, just to relax and to allow everything to be <laughs> exactly as it is. So the power of this transmission by your example is what really counts rather than just becoming someone that rants and raves about it. It is the powerful and profound example that transmits the nature of this reality in a way that people really, they understand, they recognize, they see. Because this is who we all are. We are open intelligence, and it's just a question of recognizing it and then settling into that and becoming used to it. Yeah, so if you are new, then um, just go at the pace that you're comfortable with, but, but it is important to check it out. And just to come to an open meeting is a huge step. I know that was a big step for me. But there's hundreds and hundreds of free talks on the website that you can download onto any, any digital device and listen to. We can do it in the privacy of your own bedroom or toilet or wherever you want to do it when no one will see and, and check it out for yourself or in the car when you're on your own and, and, and see what, what, what is here, you know, what is being offered and what's being spoken about. And my experience was that in my first open meeting, so much of what was spoken about just went way over my head. But there were certain points that, that stood out or, or even struck me like a lightning bolt. And so I did then go away and listen to some of these <coughs> free-to-download talks. And just by listening, and I wasn't even really listening, they'd be on, the back, in, on in the background while I was doing whatever I was doing, washing up or cooking or sleeping. What was being spoken about just became more and more obvious. And then very gradually I decided to get more involved. And as I got more involved, open intelligence became more obvious. And as that became more obvious, I knew how to respond in each situation. There was this capacity just to know and see what will really be of most benefit to myself and to everybody in each situation. This, this open-ended capacity to respond.
just just got brighter and brighter and more and more obvious. And it, it continues like that. There's no destination or end point. It's inexhaustible. And it's so exciting. It just gets better and better. My life gets better and better. I enjoy everything more and more. And yet also there is this um, increasing care for the benefit of all. This obsessive self-focus and self-centeredness, it just relaxes and relaxes and relaxes. And so I, I can take care of myself, but that's not the sole focus of my activity anymore.